Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber. And today, let's talk about how to calculate gallons per minute in a hydronic heating system when you know the BTU load of the building. Calculating gallons per minute is for sizing pumps in that hydronic heating system. You need to know two different things to calculate it. BTU load of the building and the temperature drop across the system. In order to determine the BTUs of a building, you need to do a detailed heat loss. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of how to do a heat loss, but it involves doing a lot of mathematic equations to determine how much heat your building will lose during the coldest months of the year. To keep things really simple, I'm going to say we have a building that has a heat loss of 100,000 BTUs. Now, before I can do anything with that BTU load, I need to figure out what the delta T of my system will be. Now, delta T means temperature difference, or the difference between supply and return piping. Let's clarify this with this image. All right, so what we have here is a nice tidy boiler piping job done with an NTI boiler. This pipe that's kind of in behind the back here drops down, goes through an air scoop, and then goes through the pump. That is our supply piping. That is where the hot water comes out of the boiler. And we're going to pretend that is 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's going to go through this piping, uh, down through the red piping here, which is plastic PEX. The PEX will travel down into the concrete floor, loop around inside the concrete, that will heat up the concrete, and it eventually come back up through this piping on the other side here, or through that top manifold, and back to the boiler to be reheated. We call that the return water. That is going to be 100 degrees Fahrenheit, for example. So our delta T, or temperature difference, is 120 supply minus 100 Return equals a delta T of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, just so we're clear, boiler systems do not need to be run at a 20 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference. My system is for my example, but many systems are less than that. It depends on the type of system being installed and the designer. So once again, I've got a 100,000 BTU building. I've got a delta T of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And now I get to plug those numbers into this wonderful formula here. Now let's explain what's going on here. Total BTUs divided by 8.33 US gallons times 60 minutes times delta T. That is our formula. The 8.33 number is just the weight of water in pounds for one US gallon. And the 60 minutes, well, 60 minutes in one hour. That's it. Now the smartest way to do this math so it actually works out properly is just do all the multiplication on the bottom line first. So I have 8.33 times 60 times my delta T, which was 20 degrees Fahrenheit. When I plug that through my calculator, I should get 9,996. When we're doing a delta T of 20, that number is so close to 10,000 that we just actually round it off to 10,000. And then all I'm going to do is take my BTU load of the house, which was 100,000, and divide it by 10,000 and I get a GPM of 10. All right, but say I don't want to use a delta T of 20. Say I want to use a more common one, like a delta T of 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to do the same math. 8.33 times 60 times 15 equals 7,497. Then I'm going to take my BTU load, 100,000 BTUs divided by 7,497 and that's going to equal 13.34 GPM. You can probably just safely round that off to 13 and be happy with it. Well, my friends, that is as hard as it gets. So I hope this video made sense for you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.